Good afternoon and welcome alumni, parents, donors, and fans to our special edition of Bulldogs Behind the Scenes featuring guests from UMD Athletics. My name is Molly Clevin and I'm from the University of Minnesota Duluth Alumni Relations team and we are excited to continue our virtual behind the scenes series where we take an inside look at a variety of industry leaders. This week we should have been gathered for in-person events celebrating UMD's homecoming. However, we are happy to continue the celebration remotely with special behind the scenes sessions. Today we have the honor of hearing from Karen Stromey and Gary Holquist who will be sharing an exclusive look at the history and renovations of the UMD Romano Gymnasium. Karen is in her 38th year with UMD Athletic Department and serves as Senior Associate Athletic Director and Senior Woman Administrator. Karen, who from January 2013 to May 2013 was the Bulldogs Interim Athletic Director, is also the advisor for the Student Athlete Advisory Committee, which is also known as SAC. Karen has a legendary record for Bulldog basketball wins when she coached the women's team. She spent 21 seasons directing the UMD women's program before stepping down in May 2005 to take a full-time administrative position in the athletics department. If you know Karen, she is a force on and off the court. Gary was appointed the Senior Development Officer for UMD Athletics in 2012 after spending the previous 26 seasons uh, coaching in the Bulldog men's basketball program. He is in his 46th year of higher education, which includes four years as a scholarship student athlete, 33 years as a collegiate basketball coach, and is in his ninth year as a development professional. Since taking over the development duties, Gary has helped UMD Athletics generate record amounts of fundraising revenue from a record number of donors. This includes current and future gifts to the Bulldog Club Annual Fund, as well as named scholarships, program support, capital projects, and multiple fundraising events. Gary obtained his Doctor of Education in November 2011 from the University of Minnesota Twin Cities campus. Gary and Karen are happily married and have one grown daughter. I will now hand it over to Karen and Gary. Molly, thank you for that introduction. And thank you to the UMD Alumni Association for inviting Karen and I to be a part of the Romano Gymnasium virtual tour. Welcome to all of our guests that join us today. Karen, I look forward to being able to interact with you all near the end of the program following this virtual tour. Please feel free to engage with us as we share with you the recent renovations of Romano Gymnasium and discuss our traditional and historic, historical perspectives from this uh, uh, great facility as well as the institution. To get us started, when the move from the old main campus to the current UMD campus took place, the gym was the second building to anchor the new campus up the hill. The old gym was officially opened on December 12, 1953 with a men's basketball game. Renovations of the facility took place in 1987 and just recently through three phases of the Romano project, which started in 2017 and still continue today. Well, everyone, you can see by this slide that um, the outside of the Sports and Health Center got a little makeover as well. This is the new Ordeen court that you're looking at on the screen. And you can see by the rendering that um, some of the old trees and pathways and rocks and different things are kind of out of the way now. And in what instead we have green space. And hopefully in the future, what we're gonna be able to do is perhaps before a volleyball game, have a picnic or, or gather together that way. Our students already are enjoying this. And I do know that Minnesota, the Performing Arts Center did this fall conduct an outdoor play, social distanced of course, but it happened in, in Ordean Court. And as you can see, we're looking at actually the view that we would be looking Looking at from all the double doors that would be entering into Romano Gym. Well, here we go. <laughs> this gets me excited to just even think about it. You could see a little bit of the renovation here that in live time, it's not very pretty in the in the fall, but the new Ordean Court. And this is the path that a fan would take when you're coming in to watch the Bulldogs play. We enter in the in the door in the large atrium, and you can see our Bulldog signage there, and you'd get your tickets off to the left there, and you would then welcome to Bulldog Country. And that's the way that we want all of our fans and our alums to feel. You would enter through these doors and be greeted with a pleasant hello from our ticket takers that I can <laughs> almost envision right here. Um, and then walking into the lobby area, which is gonna be phase three. 
and not done yet, but phase three of our Romano project. You can see that our lobby has got some of the old remnants of the history of all of our storied programs with our trophies and memorabilia that we will be changing those kind of um, little pockets of hallways there to clear out some more room for our fans and that would be putting up in the front. And as we're walking up, we're seeing how this building was named. And you can see that Ralph Romano was our athletic director um, for those many years and did so much for UMD athletics and the, the gym bears his name. Well, the 2,800 seat facility has sure been a great home for men's and women's basketball and volleyball over the years. You know, our basketball records for the men's program go back to 1953, 1954 season. And you can see the home records for men's basketball, women's basketball, and volleyball are impressive. For a 772 winning percentage, Romano sure has been a, it's just an awesome environment for us athletically and competitively over the years. These last two slides, uh, basically, are, you're going to look at our, our shots from the 1987 Romano. This, this shot right here is you know, reminiscence of our great crowds that we had uh, through the 80s and early 90s. And then here are the slides, you know, uh, both Butch Cronin and myself were assistants at Dale Race. Bruce McLeod was the AD when, when this next remodel took place. And, and uh, you know, from there, you've got the, the destruction of the next one. Well, these two Bulldogs really had stayed connected with UMD Athletics. You can see myself and my brother actually used to coach with me for 17 years. But um, Chris Dillavu on the left, um, is now an executive at Medtronics and Christy Plant, another number 25, who's a Duluthian. But a little bit of trivia about Christy is that she is currently married to Derek Plant, who has been recently rehired as our assistant met men's hockey coach. This was a, you know, we, we in the past were able to even play in front of our crowds to, to go on to national tournaments. This was one of those shots. It was so exciting. And I know that our fans appreciated to have the opportunity to send teams on to championships right from Romano Gym. This is some of the, again, some of the women's basketball history, and it really is something that it is all about a program. And we all know that, that it's really about tradition. And those women that are playing today in Romano Gym really have the shoulders that they're standing on from those that went before them. So you can see all the all-conference and the wonderful accomplishments that our women's basketball program has had. Also, I just want to say, look at the crowds. You can just imagine it. We can see number 54 is Jay Ginninger that, that um, is taking the jump shot there. But just look at Romano was packed and it was and Chris Listow was actually on the right and number 34. And you could just see people with their excitement and anticipation and, and the storied history of Romano. And Jay, Jay uh, was the all-time leading scorer in the history of uh, UMD basketball broke Mike Patterson's record back in the uh, early 90s. And just this past season, uh, the record was broken by Brennan Meyer. Um, and that stood for a long time. This is Dale Race, obviously, you know, Dale and I had a great connection through life. I was with him as a player and assistant for 25, 20 some years. And uh, um, he's the all time uh, um, win percentage coach, leading win percentage in the, in the Bulldog basketball program on the men's side. How about those lengths of those shorts? <laughs> <laughs> Cracks me up, anyway. And once again, just to reiterate what Karen said, uh, you know, tremendous history and tradition of the program. The teams that come forward right now, um, playing under Coach Wick, the head coach right now, have really um, benefited from all the tradition and history that was laid down before them from the previous uh, players and teams. And some of the things that you should know is that the sport programs have had varying national associations and conference affiliations. We've belonged to the Minnesota Interle Intercollegiate Athletic Association, MIAC, the Northern Intercollegiate Conference, NIC, the Northern Sun Conference, the NSC, the North Central Conference, the NCC, and now our current Division II Conference, the Northern Sun Intercollegiate Conference. Once again, you know, on a national level, in volleyball, you and me belong to the now defunct Association of Intercollegiate Athletics for Women before joining the NCAA Division II ranks in 1982. In basketball, both programs bounce back and forth between the National Association of Intercollegiate Athletics, NAIA, and the NCAA II before strictly staying NCAA II beginning in 1995. 
Well, I know that we've got one alum that's been a, just a storied, <laughs> storied Julie Visker, I think is on this line and I'm so excited that she is, but volleyball really has had just an amazing run here. You can look at all the numbers. I won't read them to you, but you can just even getting to fi two final four appearances and, and all the all-conference players and the regional championships and all the excitement they brought and continue to bring to Romano Gym. Let's take a look at the Romano project. It was planned in three phases with destruction and construction starting in 2017. Funding for the Romano project was a three-pronged partnership between the University of Minnesota system, UMD and the, Twins, and the Twin Cities. Second one was Minnesota State Legislation, the Higher Education Asset Preservation and Replacement Funds, which was allocated from the 2017 state legislature. And then phil philanthropic dollars, that came from uh, various donors um, over the last, you know, five six years. That really drove this project forward to have it done to to, to gather the money from the system as well as from the legislature. Oh, I'll tell you what, this video just makes me makes me, and I'm sure any alum that ever put on a Bulldog uniform and played up in Romano Gym, that they remember this. This is just the path that they would take from their locker rooms, turn in the corner, going up the stairs to be entering into Romano Gym. Some of the new things that you'll see right there, you know, is just some of the additions that we've done very simply to a hallway of put a stripe of yellow paint and, a, and a, an acrylic bulldog head. There's the gold paint again. And it really does dress up the whole idea of the bulldog brand. Um, we are so proud of that bulldog head. And just for all of you to know officially that the gold bulldog head is our brand forever now. We've kind of gotten away from the gray, although I miss it, I understand it. And here we go turning the door and walking into the big, beautiful site of entering in for competition of our of Romano Gymnasium. And there we have it, as you can see that it's kind of game set up. We were taking this video right as volleyball was um, making a transition from practicing from basketball to volleyball. And so setting up the nets and getting ready. Okay, so now we're in Romano Gymnasium and this is the, the slide is the dividing wall that was replaced, retooled and branded with Welcome to Bulldog Country. So that uh, carpeted wall that used to be in there for, for 20 some <laughs> seasons is gone. We have uh, a wall in here that's branded, that's lighter, that can open uh, and close easier with more accessibility. Uh, the next two slides are, are the finished product. You know, please note that the center court is an outline of the great state of Minnesota, and that includes a red star that's located where Duluth, Minnesota is. Beautiful court. Okay, during the next few minutes, we'll roll with a video of Romano and talk about aspects of the project, um, just in the different phases that we went through. I'll get to these beams later on, which are very important, but uh, phase one included installation of a new Dactronics high definition video board that you see there. It's a 14 by 20 foot wall display on the north end of Romano. Uh, this is the hub of Bulldog Productions, which offers fans, athletes, live game feeds, replays, real time statistics, as well as video messaging, promotions, and unique clips. You'll see some of what Bulldog Productions creates for the fan experience as we continue with the video uh, later on. Also installed was a video board at the main scorers table. During this phase, the men and women's locker rooms that you'll see in a little bit were also renovated. Now phase two included installation of a top end competition playing surface throughout the entire space. And just to add a little bit more information about that is that this floor is the same type of floor that the Minnesota Timberwolves play on. And for those of you that don't know much about gym floors, even more, there are all different levels of the quality of boards and we went for it. We went, we have the best floor that you can have and it has a, a kind of a nice give. Um, there's a high-end floor mounted basketball standards and volleyball equipment. And um, there's an enhanced lower level seating with back support that is collapsible. This makes the facility more user-friendly for audiences and potential event use. The design enhances three full cross courts for athletic practices and intramurals. We also paid attention to the increased ADA or the Americans with Disabilities Act capacity and functionality. We improved and enhanced the lighting quality, which reduced the building's carbon footprint. And the entire sound system was replaced and coordinated with all of the video production and scores table. Now, as you enter into the level of uh 
uh, the upper balconies of Romano. Uh, you can, once again, looking down at uh, um, the Romano playing surface. And just, I just want to piggyback on what Karen talked about that, that playing surface is that it is cushioned. It does have give to it. And uh, you know, there's a lot less uh, wear and tear on our players. So also during phase two, a new HVAC system was installed. In essence, another floor was built with a pair of penthouses on the roof to install the HVAC equipment, which included steel beam reinforcement of the roof. Now this, what you're looking at is basically a part of Bulldog Productions that, uh, used, that we have fan interaction and uh, being able to uh, get that great fan experience uh, through all our video display board. In the fall of 2019, the facility received another facelift with the addition of uh, two wall wraps. One we talked about on the folding wall and then the other behind the benches and scorers table, uh, reading Minnesota Duluth. Also during the past year, almost all D2 sport teams locker rooms were renovated via athletic alumni financial support. You know, one of the things that I also wanna, uh, before we hit on Dave Goldberg, which the floor is named after, one of the things that I wanted to touch on was uh, um, you know, that urban legend about, about the steel beams on the roof is that uh, when we had a heavy snow load, the beams were not as strong as they should be. The baskets hung from those beams and they would fluctuate anywhere from four to five inches depending on the, on the snow load. So the baskets would be lower at times and it's urban legend that opposing coaches used to always come into the gym and ultimately measure uh, the rim to floor and they were usually right. We had to adjust the floor depending on what the snow load was, but that's all gone now. The beams have been reinforced. Okay, well here you can see a legend in his own right. And we should highlight here that on October 3rd, 2018, prior to a UMD volleyball game, the playing floor was designated Dave Goldberg Court in honor of Dave Goldie Goldberg. Goldie's a 1957 Bulldog alumnus of the School of Business and a longtime fan supporter and philanthropist of Bulldog Athletics. We want to say thanks to Goldie. He continues to make a significant impact on all of UMD, whether it be athletics, student life, or the many collegiate areas that he supports. Thanks, Goldie. We can discuss next steps in phase three of the model project at the end of the presentation during the question and answer segment. Uh, in closing of this section, I just want to give a shout out to our official athletic wear sponsor, Under Armour, who provides all of our team uniforms, and apparel. Now we get to see some of the new locker rooms just as they're panning across here. And Julie, you get a kick out of this. There is actually now a, an area where, with a mirror where you can do, um, do, do your hair. So <laughs> this is actually walking into the women's basketball locker room. Oh my goodness, people who are just seeing this for the first time. Custom made beautiful um, hardwood lockers with personal lockable spaces. Um, the, the little um, seats open up on the bottom for that for storage, further storage. You can see they can lock in their cell phones or other electronics. They have their own individual name plates. Um, it is really, you know, our teams really, if you build it, they will come. I mean, people are really excited about the, um, you know, the quality of space that they have. We couldn't change the, um, the size of the locker rooms, the footprint, if you will, but we sure did make upgrades to the, to the inside. And as always, we're going to have a little legends of the past. Those are some of the faces of the people that went before, and they're always going to be a part of our traditions. We were walking into the men's basketball locker room. We've got a little lighting technique on there as well. But uh, the 18 lockers in this space really do uh, enhance, enhance the environment. You know, Coach Wick has done a great job over the last few years of, of recruiting Minnesota, Wisconsin kids that have really, uh, you know, have had a passion and, and, and desire to come to UMD and, and go to school academically and play basketball here. We'll talk about this board again, but this is from the old floor. A um, friend of mine resurfaced it and, and put it on the wall for our student athletes to sign. And, and we'll hit this slide again later on. And I'll talk about the impact that this has had on our student athletes and, and our graduates here of leaving your legacy. And here we have the women's volleyball locker room walking in. Even though it's equally stunning, um, every team got to pick a little bit something that mattered to them. So you can see instead of the, the, the configuration on the top, they have four separate containers, still have the big bulldog logo. That's super important. Um, of course, cleanliness, look at all the hangers that are going to be ready, ready for uniforms and clothes. And then there's some video spots. And of course, champ, you know, our mascot has to be in there a little bit. 
and uh, you know, just the traditions and the, the signage and the, and the logos that we wanna continue on with uh, women's volleyball. So we're super proud of it. Our student athletes love it. And uh, oh boy, there's, there's a couple, couple great ones. So this is the old weight room. Uh, about 10 years ago, our weight room was remodeled and has, it moved spaces. But uh, over the last two, three years, we've had uh, a great involvement with outside donors and people that are alums of the school that, that gave us a financial wherewithal to turn this into a team video suite. Mike and Heather uh, Cypher, we greatly appreciate your involvement here. Um, but this is the old weight room and uh, we have continued to remodel this space. It's a video room now that uh, you know, we can probably get in about 80 people on both sides of, of the wall. And uh, we'll hit on this wall at the end again and talk about the classroom competition and uh, community service. But let's take a pause right now and really talk about um, why the plaques are there. So we, we alluded that all of our division two lockers, locker rooms have been remodeled and really it was driven strictly through athletic alumni donations back to the back to the program. And this is how we got it done through our alums and, and those colors on the wall signif signify, you know, a different level of giving. But if anybody's out there that wants to help continue to, to the cause on the locker room projects for your specific sport team, just get a hold of me. My information will be at, at uh, listed at the end. And we greatly appreciate our alumni. They've really been engaged with us and have, have definitely gone back to, uh, you know, giving. I want to discuss real quick and give you the elevator speech of what UMD Athletics is all about. It's inspiring a region, building leaders. And how do we do that? We do it through the three C's that you see up there. Excellence in the classroom, excellence in competition, and excellence in community volunteerism. Since the year 2000, excellence in competition, we have had 15 national championships, 63 conference championships, and 141 NCAA postseason berths. That's outstanding, it's, that's amazing. Excellence in the classroom, over the last four or five years, our annual GPA, our team combined cumulative GPA has consistently been between a 3-2 and a 3-3 GPA level. And obviously we always talk about excellence in community volunteerism. We want our student athletes to understand what it is to be a good person in a good society and give back. And we have averaged annually over 4,000 community volunteer service hours from our student athletes. And getting back to this board now, so my good friend, Dale Sundin lives next door to me. Uh, he and I harvest some of the old floor and we wanted to, to have some legacy on this old floor. And so Justin Wick, our basketball coach, and Mandy's gonna do this as well for the women's program, felt that we want our, all of our athletic alums to come back and, and sign this board and be a part of it. And then he has developed tradition now on graduation day, his seniors that graduate and leave the program, the very first thing they do that morning on graduation is come in here and sign the board. And it's all about leaving your legacy, leaving your mark. And here, if uh, you see this, I'm signing for coach Butch Coronan, signing his name, Butch passed a few years back. And, and uh, we had an alumni gathering here and, and uh, they asked me to, to um, put Butch's name on there. But it's uh, just a great tradition now that our men's basketball program has started and uh, women's basketball will as well. Also here, you know, this is, this used to hang in coach Race's office. And when he left, I took it. But it was, uh, it's the, all the old floorboards. And really, um, I got the idea from the old floor that was framed that hangs in my office right now with the records of coaches from 1953 to 87 when it was replaced with what I'm going to show you next. So these are the floorboards um, that we harvested. A printing friend of mine printed these for both, uh, for all three sports. Bulldog men's basketball with the record on the floor, 309, 139 losses. Bulldog women's basketball, 308 wins, 122 losses. And Bulldog volleyball, 316 wins and 47 losses. So here's how you get one, alums. You got to show up. All you got to do is come back. Let me know when you're at a contest, whether you're watching basketball or volleyball. I'll have one for you. Show up and watch your future alumni teammates play and uh, receive one of the floorboards that you played on from 1987 to 2018. Gary, I'm sorry, I have to make a correction. You gave a few too many losses for women's basketball. You said 122. 102, okay. I apologize. Oh, my God. 
what we have to know with all of our hearts is that we, as we've learned through the pandemic and so many other things is leadership is everything. And our three head coaches that we have currently right now are some of the very finest individuals and leaders that we could ever imagine. And they are doing a tremendous job and we are blessed to be able to hear from them in the next slides. Hi, I'm Mandy Pearson. I'm the women's basketball coach here at the University of Minnesota Duluth. One of the other things that you know, holds really dear to, to my heart being here as, as this is my sixth year. It still kind of feels like I just got here sometimes. And other times it feels like I've been a part of this family for a long time because of the donors and the alumni that, um, you know, not only put in their time and effort to be a part of our student athletes lives, but contribute financially to uh, this arena. And, and I mean, their support is unbelievable. I could not ask for better people to surround my team um, with. In, in this community. I mean, they're, they're phenomenal. And I really, really appreciate everything that you do for us from a financial standpoint, um, but more importantly, from, from just that human standpoint, that relationship that you have with our team. I'm Justin Wick, uh, head men's basketball coach here at UMD. I want to say thanks to all of our alumni, donors, uh, fans here in this community. Uh, this project uh, could not have been done without you. Um, it obviously makes a huge difference for us on the floor. Um, hopefully it makes a big difference for you from an experience standpoint. Um, our, our players and our student athletes really feel really feel the support here in, in the in the Duluth community. Um, our locker room is is top notch now. So thanks to um, uh, thanks to our alumni and, and donors for that. So um, again, we couldn't do it, do it without you. Uh, you continue to support us uh, both financially, but also uh, just in the support that our that our student athletes feel on, on a daily basis. My name is Jim Booz. I am the head volleyball coach at the University of Minnesota Duluth. Yeah, having been here as long as I have, and you know, thinking back to where we were from, you know, raising funds and being able to do capital uh, expenditures like this to where we are now, and the amount of give back that we have from both alumni and the community and from large businesses, uh, it's evident in what we're able to do with all of our facilities, with our locker rooms, the way teams are geared up, the way we travel. Um, it's a first class experience now. I know the student athletes are super appreciative, but as someone who's been here as long as I have, uh, I can really appreciate the work it's taken to get to where we're at. And I can't say enough to, uh, thanks to all the people that have been a part of that being Bulldog supporters. Wow. <laughs> what happened to that gray hair? You know, <laughs> oh. One of the things I want to touch on before we get into the uh, question and answer, and also a little bit about memories. But uh, you know, please know that uh, improvements to the Romano it, it benefits more than just UMD athletics. Obviously, it's a teaching station for uh, the College of Education and Human Service Profession Applied Human Science programs. It, you know, it's a, it's an important space for education there. The other part of it is our intramurals are a tremendous program at UMD, and you know, ninety some percent of our student body. Um, uses this space for intramurals, whether it's volleyball, basketball, it doesn't matter. But uh, um, you know, our student body uses this this space uh, to a great extent as well. And and the community outreach events that our community uses with the Romano space, it's one of the largest spaces in uh, northeast. I'm um, sorry, yeah, northeast Minnesota, northwest Wisconsin, that's utilized a great deal in so many different ways. And so this project really was, you know, a, a coming together of a lot of different entities, a lot of different uh, support financial groups to make this really a great space. Romano had great bones. It had uh, great structure. It just needed to be upgraded, renovated, remodeled. And, and it's been such, a, such an awesome experience to see this go through and to see all of our student athletes and student body um, use this space and, and enjoy it and appreciate it. It sure is. And I know we could talk for hours and hours and hours about memories and maybe there might be some specific questions after this, but I think more than anything else, when I look back on the times of best memories and as corny as it may sound, it really is about the people and the individuals and um, of, of the times that we cherished um, being with our teams and being with our fans and being with our alums <laughs> and being with the donors. And this, you know, just the, the gathering space of Romano is just a place forever. Um, you know, sometimes I even have dreams about, <laughs> about being in Romano for, for good and for bad, but it, it really is a place that um, is in the hearts of so many in our community. And we're just so blessed and privileged to be able to have been a part of it. So you know, when I, when I look back, just some of the memories that jump out to me, it's, it's, 
the wins and losses are, you know, they are impactful, obviously, but it's the band, you know, walking on the floor for the first time before we take the, the, the tip, the starting tip, the, the band kicks into play. Um, you know, they are just such an impressive group. Um, senior night, honoring those seniors that played in our program that still stay engaged with us over the years that, that we coached. Uh, Do you remember Midnight Madness? Yeah, yes. <laughs> and you know, Midnight Madness. For those of you, I mean, the throwback time is that we actually would really try to show everybody we're just at the top of our game by starting practice at twelve oh one a.m. Um, on October fifteenth, and we did that for I think four or five years and had some really. I'll tell my story and you can tell your story, but I just think my favorite one was when our entire team dressed up and did uh, whatever you call it, kind of a. <laughs> to the movie to thriller we did the we did a rendition of thriller and it was absolutely you know it was we have we had 2500 students that came and packed the gym and they wanted to be a part of it and it was so fun so i know you have a well, midnight of, madness story too one of our uh it was a sold out it was a it was a big thing that the hoop club used to promote all the time as well as bulldog productions but we had uh a really a full a full gym one night and had a dunk contest and about two minutes in Jason Schneeweiss, first team All-American, he was about 6'10", about 290, tore the basket down. And he looked, he, got, he had the rim in his hand, turned and looked, looked at me, I didn't know what to do, he didn't know what to do, I just ran out and gave him a high five and, you know, the night was over. But, uh, um, you know, stuff like that, you know, other things that really, um, having the football team there and, and uh, having the excitement and energy that they brought was, was a great experience as well. And, and uh, you know, just, Playing in games that counted in February and March really was an impactful thing for us. Thank you, Gary and Karen, for that um, lively tour um, and narration for the Romano Gym. There's certainly big shoes to fill and a lot of legacy. So thank you both um, for that. And now we're gonna open it up for our Q&A. Um, so as a reminder, on the bottom of your screen, you can just use the Q&A button and submit your questions live and uh, Karen and Gary will do their best to answer. Um, so you both had already kind of mentioned about your favorite memories and to kind of dovetail off of that, um, what did you cherish most about the former gym? Well, I, you know, the one thing that when people ask me, you know, after 30 some years of coaching college basketball, what do you miss the most? Obviously it's the relationships. And in that facility, there are a lot of great relationships that that were developed that uh, are still maintained today. As far as the facility structure itself, you know, I, I just remember summertime when it was, you know, 80 degrees outside and about 100 degrees inside Romano. And and with the, the humidity, you'd be giving uh, a camp lecture and, and the screws in the floor would shoot up 15 <laughs> feet in the air. And it was just it would scare the kids. But it, it, it's such a great, a great structural place that it's a. Uh, um, I'm not. I'm not sure if we ever wanted to to lose that, but there was, um, you know, it was it was a tough place to play. I love where our bench was. Mm -hmm. I actually, you know, when you talk about taking the floor boards when they, when they first started to take apart that court, I ran over and grabbed all the boards that were right in front of the bench. They're, I still have them in my office today. They're so important to have, and I don't know what I'm gonna do with them. But but uh, obviously things like that um, from the old facility were. Uh, impressive, but it was the relationships. Yeah, and I would echo that too. And one of the things that I always said, no matter what, even when those screws were shooting out of the floor and when, you know, all, all the things that we'd look at and see the, the kind of the yellow haze around because of the color of the bricks and the ceiling and the lights and everything else. But what we always knew is that it had great bones. And I'm so, so happy that we could keep those bones in place and just really um, replace those bones with over with some other just structural things. And I love the balcony. I loved it. I love those kind of theater seats. And we, we kind of glossed over it when we went, um, you know, when we were talking earlier in the tour, but those seats actually were replaced by the University of Minnesota Northrop Theater. I think that they brought those seats and actually redid them and they're so comfortable and so cool and it's got this really intimate feeling but it, it really does create a hometown advantage when the fans are rocking in Romano so I certainly cherish those times and still look forward to them in the future. Wonderful and on the flip side of that what do you love most about the new renovations? 
And this, I, I enjoy looking at the big bulldog head on the floor with the state of Minnesota, you know, and, and, and when you get close to it, to have that star where the red star where Duluth is located in that state, uh, um, that's a special thing. And obviously the basketball standards are, are great for a basketball coach too, to have, have that type of apparatus on the floor. I just love watching the, you know, the technology that we keep moving forward, that video board, in addition to everything Gary said, which I really agree with, um, that video board is really a game changer. You know, sometimes it can, we didn't get to hear it, you know, on the tour today, but it is loud and it is impactful and it is big and it is, makes such an atmosphere in the gym. And, you know, Josh Burlow and others did so many things to get that, that atmosphere in the gym. And I, I really actually have seen visiting teams when they're lining up in the video board comes on they stop and they turn and look with their jaws dropped like oh my gosh <laughs> this is big time kind of and so it really has um, become the the history has been preserved but we're taking steps forward to make these programs um, take the take the leaps that they can to be nationally national contenders and speaking of history we just had a question submitted um, wondering if you can provide a little bit of information about Ralph um, when did he pass away and is his family still in the area and involved with UMD? Well, I will talk about when did he pass away. This is really the story that, you know, you just can never forget. I was recently, I mean, I, I had recently been hired by Ralph. I was 23 years old. It was the first year of me um, being an assistant coach at UMD in 1983. And we, I was at a hockey game as all the staff always went in the same section. I can still see it. And um, if, if you can even imagine this, that Ralph suffered a heart attack at a hockey game and passed away shortly after that um, in 1983. So um, that, that, you know, right, it was shocking to all of us, but he had just done so many things to put us in the direction that we are going now. I think, you know, the Romano family has been connected with the institution for a long, long time. You know, Jeff is still, you know, Ralph's son, Jeff is an administrator here. And, and uh, I think one of the unique things that when the floor was dedicated in Dave Goldberg's name, the entire Romano family was there and present and wanted to acknowledge that, that, that Dave Goldberg and, and that the floor was being named there and, and just to be a part of, of, of this whole structure of the Romano. And it was, you know, I, I kept up with the family as we continued to do the phases of the Romano project and, and make sure that it made sure that they knew what was happening to this facility that was named after, after Ralph. Very good. Um, we have some questions about the actual gym and the floor. Um, one comes from Julie wondering what does athletics look like for this year? And will people get to come and watch basketball in Romano? Boy, we, Julie, we are hoping. You know, what I can tell everybody is that we are working every single day to be ready if the green light is given, not only by the Minnesota State Department of Health and if COVID is going to, you know, allow us to. And, and I also can tell you that our student athletes, our, our medical staff, our athletic trainers, our athletic director, um, we have protocols in place that we are ready if we are going to be given the opportunity to do so, which in division two, for everybody to know, the first possible time that we can compete would be after December 31st, so in January. So right now, basketball and um, is, is slated to start some, you know, sometime in January and have outside competition. Now lots has to go in place, but that's our hope and dream. And then with regard to, I'll just say, because Julie asked a question with volleyball, there still might be the possibility of a smaller, quicker season for volleyball in the spring. Wonderful. Um, question about the gym, how many people can hold the gym hold? It's right around 2,800. Um, you know, it was over 3,000 back with the remodel, but with the penthouses that contain all the HVAC system on there, we probably lost maybe two, 300 seats. Um, but it's, uh, you know, obviously a great intimate environment, but the number we throw around there is around 2,800. Um, another question about the renovation. Um, is there some sort of a press box or some kind of box in the balcony um, on the west side? 
I wish we would have that, um, but no. Our press row is, you, we really didn't see it. Are you gonna laugh at you? No, oh, no, that's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, um, I, we, we're, we're looking at the view, you know, above that's, that's our um, scores table. And at, at opposite that, we just have some small tables that we have for press row, so. If somebody might be alluding to a possible club room there, which is something that we're still trying to explore through phase three. And that's, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to look at that addition of either making one in the balcony area or one on the on the on the north end or uh, you know of the of the arena but uh, that's still that's still out there and something that we uh, you know are, are looking at trying to explore and that's actually a perfect segue into our final question are there any other funding needs or fundraising initiatives that um, you have in the works well, yes, there are. <laughs> Thank you. As I, as we talked about before, that anybody that wants to get involved, that's an alum with uh, with their specific sport locker project. That's that's uh, an unending, um, in perpetuity, um, project that we have to help continue to upgrade and improve locker space, video production, anything that will have program enhancement. And we'll, you can get your name on on our board there. We continue to try to to, to do that. Um, we continue to seek out people that want to be involved with the Romano project to help us with other areas of uh, phase three. In phase three, we want to look at the lobby and the atrium, trying to expand that and create more space out there and get rid of those old trophy cases and really go virtual on our Hall of Fame, go virtual so you can see game footage out there of past uh, Hall of Fame members and teams and make it more of a, a fan interaction and enhancement of the, the, the game day experience there. Um, we have plans to try to install a ribbon message board on the south end by the carpeted wall that would that would have live stats and, and game stats at that time. Um, also the side baskets, we've had a project that has that has looked at re-engineering and replacing those side baskets, but we need to come up with the financial wherewithal to get those replaced. And, and that'll be a partnership um, with Rec Sports as well as facilities management on that. Um, actually going on right now in phase three is the is the complete renovation of the bathrooms. So we're gonna flip the bathrooms, the men will be on the women's side, the women's will be on the men's side, but that, that is going on right now and, and those upgrades will be done hopefully uh, after the new year. Um, and, and as we go on in the building as well, we continually look to, to um, um, rehabilitate our sports medicine area, our strength, our strength and conditioning area, um, continue to try to look at video upgrades um, you know, of all of our athletic spaces as well. So phase three has got a lot of things as, as well as the possibility of looking at a club room. Nice. And if someone is interested in um, donating, how might they go about that? Get a hold of me. You can actually go uh, online as well in, 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 our, in our Bulldog uh, website, um, in our landing space. Just uh, go to the Bulldog Club and look at that. But, uh, you know, otherwise give me a call or email me, text me. I've had a number of alums already text me as we've gone on the last 45 minutes here, but uh, um, they've been absolutely tremendous. Our alums have been great to continue to escalate and give back. As Karen talked about, you know, they are the shoulders that our teams right now are standing on and, and to continually give back and create those special opportunities for our student athletes now creates that great um, interaction between the, the, the past athletic alum, as well as the present and future alums that will come into our program. It's a great family and it really is uh, something that's full of history and tradition. Once a bulldog, always a bulldog. We want you to come back. We want everybody to come back and see this beautiful place. And most of all, see these incredible student athletes and coaches play. So thanks Molly for a great opportunity today. We have had so much fun. It just brings you back and gets us talking a little faster and it was really fun. Yes, thank you to the Alumni Association, Molly, thank you. And I think you do have our contact information that you will display oh, at the end here. Awesome, <laughs> great, all right. Okay. Well, thank you two so much. And um, as Gary mentioned, here's uh, both his and Karen's contact information as well as our office. Um, thank you both so much. This was such a historical perspective um, and it was really fun to have you to narrate that. Um, also tomorrow we have one final um, behind the scenes webinar um, to wrap up our homecoming week. And it's all about the history of buildings names at UMD. So you'll definitely wanna check that out. Um, we're still taking registrations for that. 
So once again, thank you. And we will see you online. Go Bulldogs. Go Bulldogs. Go Bulldogs. Thank you.